Good morning, East Hill, and to any guests who may be tuning in this morning. I'm so honored that you've chosen to spend your morning with us. Can we all agree that it's been a crazy week? Normally, we would be gathering together on campus to worship as a family. I, for one, miss that routine. I've been getting up on Sunday mornings and heading to church for nearly all of my adult life. It feels strange to not be in the building with all of you, but it reminds me that the church is not just a place to gather, although I'm extremely grateful that we can, but we are instead a people. And whenever and wherever we gather to lift up the name of Jesus, he promises to accompany us with his presence. So I'm extremely grateful for the technology that allows us to still gather together and worship in the, and in the word. Okay. So gather everyone around your computer, your iPad, cell phone, or TV. Can we all say thank God for Apple TV? In a moment, we're going to spend some time in worship. And after that, I'll bring a message that I believe God wants me to deliver today. Normally, in our gatherings, we continue our personal worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings to the Lord. For those of you who would like to continue that pattern, and for any guests that would like to give, you can find alternative ways to give through texting or online through our website, or you can always mail them to our offices. All of the ways to give are also listed on our website at easthill.org give. And also for updates from me, please continue to visit our website or our Facebook page or Instagram. Now let's go ahead and worship the Lord together. Showed me the Holy Spirit 
joyfully weaving in and out of every person and I'm locking and breaking those chains. And I felt like the Lord said that now is the time. Don't wait, now is the time to stand firm in who he has called us to be. It says in Ephesians that before the creation of the world, he chose us to be holy and blameless in his sight through Jesus. That is our identity. We are his children. And so as we sing through these words again, I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. Let us stand firm, knowing that we are his. Let it be a declaration. And as we sing these words, those chains of condemnation, of guilt, of shame, of addiction, will break off in the name of Jesus. Let's lift our hands together. Let's declare this truth in the name of Jesus. I'm chosen, not forsaken. Let's sing it together. Here we go. Thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. Thank you, Lord, that your acceptance of us and your forgiveness for us is not based on what good things we can do, the efforts that we put in, but it's by your grace and by your favor that's undeserved that we stand here today in your presence and in relationship with you. We bless you this morning. We worship you with all that we've got today. In Jesus' name. Let's worship. You are here. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in. Right. 
Yes, Lord. That's who you are. That's who you are. I want to sing in faith this morning, church. Even when we can. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're moving. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop.
So how many of you in this room would say you're in a situation, you're in a circumstance that if God doesn't break through, it's impossible? Could you raise your hand? All over this room, just raise your hand right up. How many of you know that worship is not something that prepares us for battle? Worship is the battle. Amen? Amen? So what I want us to do right now is, you know, Paul says uh, in the book to the Corinthians, he says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle. Our fight is not with human forms. We wrestle against principalities and powers of the rulers of the darkness of this age for pulling down the weapons of our warfare are in God and they're, they're mighty for pulling down strongholds. Pastor Keith talked two weeks ago about the strongholds of our minds, amen? And so I want to speak this morning. Just close your eyes all over this place. I've got the same word just for depression this morning in Jesus' name, Lord. We come against depression and the fog that is on people's minds right now, Lord, and we say, be loosed in Jesus' name. The peace of God fall on you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that that clarity of mind and peace of mind and joy would return to those who are struggling in this area, Lord. For the joy of the Lord truly is our strength, Lord, through every circumstance and every circumstance. Lord, would you give the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, Lord. And the oil of joy for mourning, Lord, this morning. We pray for physical illness. If you're struggling in your body this morning, just raise your hand out to God, not to me, but to the Lord, and just say, Jesus, I need your healing in my body. Right now, we pray for every ailment, for every struggle in everybody. We say, be healed in Jesus' name. You know what it is, name it. Just say, God, would you heal me right now in this atmosphere of worship, in this atmosphere of the presence of God. Lord, we just say, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. And so I want us to take this psalm one more time. Whatever your battle is, whatever your struggle is, how many of you know that when in the midst of a circumstance and situation, that when you give glory to God, when you give worship to God, you give Him great glory and great honor, amen? 
despite, even though the circumstance would say, uh uh, just sit down and just relax and just be defeated, that you stand against that stronghold, that mindset, and say, no, I'm going to worship my God in the midst of this situation. You give him great glory and great honor. And that's a level at which the devil cannot compete with God because he has no glory and he has no honor. Can I get an amen? This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. Come on, sing that. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my Hey everyone, I was sent an article that sort of put things in perspective for me this week and also set me ablaze. I've always been a student of history. There are so many lessons to be learned from the past that can be a source of help for us with contemporary problems. The coronavirus is to be taken seriously. And as a church, we take the safety and welfare of our community of faith very seriously at all times. But this is not the first time that a plague has threatened humanity. In 250 to 270 AD, a plague ran through the Roman Empire. It was believed to be smallpox or measles. It was devastating. Nearly 5,000 people died daily in Rome and even more throughout the empire. This plague also triggered the first empire-wide persecution of Christians under Emperor Decius. Christians were blamed, if you will believe that or not, blamed for the plague. The claim was, however, unfounded and undermined by two inconvenient truths. Christians were sick and dying from the plague like everyone else. But unlike everyone else, they cared for the victims, even their pagan neighbors who were persecuting them. That epidemic that seemed like the end of the world actually prompted the spread of Christianity. By their actions in the face of possible death, Christians showed that their faith wasn't just worth living for, it also gave them courage and hope even in the face of death. More recently, we witnessed the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. Many were affected and died, but medical professionals with Doctors Without Borders and missionaries, instead of running away to safety in America, ran directly into affected areas where the sick were suffering to provide care. They were also confronted with the daily duty of processing the dead. All of them had close contact with those affected, and the chief means of spreading the deadly virus was through human contact. And yet those Christians, at great risk to themselves, served the sick and the dying. Not to mention they endured the personal, mental, and emotional anguish of living and serving among the dying. One of the doctors was asked, why are you putting yourself at such risk? His reply was, I'm, pra I'm a practicing Christian. 18 centuries later, Christians are still running toward what plagues humanity, to love and to serve their neighbors. While everyone else is running away into isolation and self-preservation, we get to practice being a Christian when it matters most to our city and to our world. I'm going to preempt the series we've been in and minister a message that I began to share at staff prayer earlier this week. It seems appropriate for the moment we now find ourselves in. 
If you have your Bible, you can open it to Psalms 18. And please allow me to give you just a little context for those who may not be familiar with this particular portion of Scripture. It is a psalm that David personally wrote and sung on the day that all of his enemies had been disposed of. You might know the story of David and Goliath. That David, that's the one we're talking about. He also sung it as an elderly man reflecting back on his life and his journey. David had been anointed the next king of Israel at a fairly young age, and he was favored by God so much so that he was successful in every military campaign he engaged on behalf of the king, Saul, at the time. Saul became jealous and envious of David and set out to kill him. David wisely ran and went into hiding. In fact, some of the most poignant psalms are written as he is hiding and on the run from King Saul. Finally, David is enthroned, as God had promised him years earlier, and all of his enemies have been dispatched. And so let's take a moment and let's read Psalms 18, verse 1 through 3. Let me read it here. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Then he says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to, to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. David in this moment is looking back, reflecting with the perspective that can only come when the battle is over, when the storm has passed, or when the floodwaters have sought to drown our praise and our confidence in the Lord have been abated. And he begins to sing praise to the Lord. Let me interject here. You don't have to wait until your battle is over to sing and to shout the Lord's victory. You can praise him right now for the victory while you are being treated maybe for cancer. While you're believing for your marriage to be reconciled and renewed, don't wait. Praise him right now. As you read these verses, please take note of, of David's personal declarations. David is making this thing personal. He says, God is my strength, my rock my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my shield, my salvation, and my stronghold. These are the words of someone who has been tried and who has experienced firsthand the preservation and the protection of the Lord under extreme duress. In fact, David's first words are found in verse one, and it reveals the condition of his heart when he says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. Wait, wait a minute. There's, there's no hint of anger or bitterness or resentment or offense against God in David's declaration. He's been on the run from Saul for years, hiding in caves, never knowing if today is going to be his last day. No security, no certainty, no doubt battling anxiety all the time. And his heart seems to be gushing, dare I say, overflowing with love for God in this moment. He didn't blame God for not delivering him sooner. His heart in this moment is full of love and gratitude. Then he says something I find very strange living in Oregon. He says, the Lord is my rock. And for all of us that live in Oregon, we may not have a full understanding of how helpful a rock may have been for David running in the Palestinian desert, trying to escape the merciless heat and sun. It would have also provided him much needed shelter in the cracks and the crevasses. Not to mention it would have provided him with a firm place to stand and to fight. May I take a moment to remind all of us that Jesus is our rock, where we stand in times of uncertainty, wherein we can find shelter and safety in moments like these. And the firm foundation that we can not only build upon, but from which we can stand and fight the good fight of our faith. I don't know about you, but I often find myself depleted and drained of my strength. Coco would say, I don't rest well enough and that I have a hard time shutting my mind off. She may or may not be right. Like David, I have likewise found in Jesus an inexhaustible source of strength. My strength fails and is not sufficient at times to meet the challenges I face. When my strength fails and I'm weakened, his strength is then made perfect in and through me. He goes on to say that the Lord is his fortress or stronghold. It's his place of safety and protection from his enemies. Everyone in our world right now is looking for a safe place. 
In fact, we're not allowed to gather this morning because being in these environments is deemed unsafe. So where can I go? Where can I run? Well, into the presence of the Lord. He is a fortress of protection for all of us. We have no need to fear. Now, now mind you, the coronavirus has literally shaken the foundations of the entire world. Everyone is affected by the news of this pandemic. It's forcing all of us to answer some really important questions. Like for instance, what have I built my life upon? What and who have I made the source of my strength? Can it sustain me in this moment? Where does my peace and assurance come from? Where do I run to for safety and security? For Christians, we run into the Lord. He will provide safety for us and he will sustain us. Okay, let's really get serious for a moment. All the podcasts, the sermons, the retreats, the conferences, the books, the endless amount of information, Christian information that we've devoured were tools we use to build a foundation for our lives in Christ so that when, not if, the storms of life come, we would be secured. Would you turn in your Bible with me for a moment to Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24? It's a familiar portion of scripture to some of us, but I want to read it and just draw out a few things from it. Verse 24 says these words, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Verse 25, the rains came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet, it didn't fall. Why not? Because it is founded on the rock. Verse 26, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Now watch this in verse 27. The rain came down, the streams arose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Church, it's raining. The streams are rising all over the world. Winds are blowing and beating against every life. Foundations are being tried. Believers and unbelievers alike are being tried. No one could have foreseen a global pandemic. If you have felt overwhelmed and overcome by fear and anxiety this past week, that doesn't make you faithless. It makes you human. Now, collect yourself for a moment. Lean in with me right now and remind yourself that the same God who spoke this world into existence is your God. Remember the God that delivered Israel from the bondage of Egypt? and parted the Red Sea, that God will keep you. Remember that it was God who empowered David to slay Goliath. It wasn't that he was such a great marksman. And lastly, dare we forget, remember that your God opened the tomb of his slain son who was crucified for the sins of the world, but death couldn't hold him. Your God demonstrated his love and power by raising him from the dead, not even death can stand against our God. He is undefeated. David made his stand on the rock. We should join him. Now that the initial wave of emotions is past, let's steady ourselves. Can somebody say amen, please? <laughs> In your house, I bet you somebody said amen. Last Sunday, we sang the chorus to the song. This is how I fight my battles. Well, it's time to fight. <laughs> but how? Well, first, let me suggest that we fight in prayer. Philippians 4 and 6 and 7 reminds us when it says these words, Paul writes, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, especially ones like this, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And watch this. Here's the result. Here's what happens when we pray. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard, stand sentry over our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We should be interceding for our leaders, our healthcare professionals, and all of the first responders who are running to the sick to provide care. Engage your entire family in this effort, beloved. 
Gather the children together, the teens, moms, dads, grandparents, neighbors, cats, dogs, hamsters, turtles, get everybody together and let's create a pavilion of prayer in your house. How about this one? Here's another one. We can fight in praise and worship. Pastor Dave Kelly reminded us just last Sunday that praise and worship was not a passive activity. No, sir, but rather it is a weapon a weapon against fear, a weapon against anxiety, in times just like this. I want you to stay as informed as you possibly can, but you gotta monitor how much of the news cycle you are engaged in. Pull yourself away from the internet and the TV and fill your homes, your cars, and most importantly, your hearts with worship. The Bible says in Psalms 34 and verse three, glorify the Lord with me, let us exalt his name together. One translation said, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. This is huge. I want to have my heart so full of praise that I begin to magnify the Lord above the coronavirus, above news cycles, above my fear, above my anxiety. I want to magnify the Lord who is high and lifted up. He's above all of these circumstances. Not to mention, I fully trust that he is in control of every single one of our lives right now. How many of you know that our God is bigger than this outbreak? Come on, say amen. At home again, say it. Come on, everybody, all together. Amen. All right. Lastly, would you look for ways that you can be an encouragement to others and for ways that you can serve? We are already being contacted by numerous groups in our city to help in various ways. Next week, we will be making a call to action for all of us. Now is not the time for us to isolate and to draw back in fear. We've been sent. See it? We've been sent for such a time as this. God has not been caught off guard by this virus in this moment of time. He has a plan for you and I in the midst of what is a dark time in our planet. Since we can't attend church as we normally would, we get to be the church all over the city and in every community and every neighborhood. Over the next several weeks on Sunday mornings, here's something you might want to try. Why not host watch parties? I'm going to be bringing content to you. We're going to make sure that we have worship and praise online for you. So host a watch party with your family, your friends and your neighbors, especially those that are far from God who will be seeking comfort from all of the news that they've heard during the week, everyone can bring food and have fun. They will see firsthand your joy, your hope, and your peace. <laughs> You'll get to share the reason for your peace. Amen? Let's pray together this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this opportunity that we've had to be together. Lord, it's, it's at this moment that we get to authenticate our faith. The foundations are being tried all over the world. The rains have come, the streams have risen, and the winds of adversity are blowing. And yet our God remains unmoved. And so therefore, those of us that are in you, that have taken our refuge in you, we are unshaken. And God, we confess that you are indeed Lord of our lives. And in this moment, would you steady us, bring calm to us, and then use us as a resource to the world in this moment. Let's look around for those that may need encouragement or strength or hope or even resourced in practical ways. God, use us in this moment. Thank you that we are the church. We don't just go to church, that we have this moment that we get to serve when people need it the most. Lord, we're grateful for it. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Listen, have a great week. Have a faith filled week. Don't be scared. Be wise. Be vigilant. Be sober, but not fearful. The Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. I love you. I'll see you soon.